Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we've got another top five guns video for you. And this one is a doozy. A real doozy. Okay, so I was in Washington DC recently, okay? And I visited the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. And I must say, it was one of the coolest things I've ever done. It was so much fun. The minute I went in the door, the first thing I wanted to do was see the dinosaurs. Okay, so I went over the fossil area and I'm blown away. Just look at, man, look at all these freaking dinosaurs. And of course, the redneck in me, I just couldn't help it. <laughs> the first thing I thought of is what kind of gun would it take to take down these dang dinosaurs? If you were a prehistoric man, or let's just say it even better, let's create a scenario where you're sent back in time and you have to take five guns with you if, the di if you have to go dinosaur hunting or defend yourself against deadly dinosaurs who are trying to kill you. So I took some shots of these skeletons. Not shots at. Not shots at, camera okay. shots, okay. In my mind though, I was taking some literal shots in my mind with guns, thinking, oh, man, where would you have to shoot these things? How big are these animals, really? How big are their bones? What's their bone structure like? You know, what would be their muscular uh, structure? You know, where would the vital organs be? And some of these animals present a pretty difficult task of putting the animal down, especially keeping them from eating you. <laughs> <laughs> or killing you, or trampling you. Look, just remember, prehistoric man killed these creatures with sticks. Sharp sticks. What? So, all right. No! In my mind, what's going through my mind is, okay, instantly what I'm thinking of is you have to have big bore. You've got to have something with a good solid that can get through that heavy skin, through that heavy sinew and muscle and those heavy bones, not to mention... Some of these animals were ridiculously wide, right? You're talking woolly mammoths, triceratops, uh, you know, uh, Tyrannosaurus rex, Brachiosaurus, Brontosaurus. I mean, all these huge animals that are just incredibly large and you can't put it into perspective until you're actually standing in the same room with their skeletons and you realize, holy crap, these animals are huge. And many of these animals have natural armor, okay? Their bones are very, very thick. Now, those would be the ones that would be Probably the hardest one to take down with a mm -hmm. firearm. Tyrannosaurus rex, right? T-Rex actually has relatively small bone structure. I was kind of surprised to see that because he is a predator, he has relatively uh, light skeletal structure to keep him fast and agile, mm -hmm. all right? Many uh, velociraptors have hollow bones like a bird to make them be able to jump higher, uh, to make them faster, to make them more agile. And Those scary. animals, you know, you don't have to have quite as much uh, heavy medicine to get through those animals like you might think. It's the uh, vegetarian, right, the, the plant-eating uh, herbivores, herbivores that you would have to worry about the worst because they have large bone structures that's meant to hold. And the bone structures of these animals are so large because they have to hold a lot of muscle weight. And they have large skeletal structures to support the large weight of these animals. That also means you've got to shoot through a lot to get to the vital areas. So let's go on after this a little bit. So what's number one? I don't know. I mean, all right, with with Jurassic Park, you know, uh, the most recent one with Chris Pratt and all is Owen carrying a guide gun. I mean, we think that a guide gun is probably a cool uh, addition to this lineup. So he was carrying a 1895 Marlin guide gun chambered in 4570. His was not outfitted with a can. I've got a Silencer Co. Uh, hybrid on here. And he had a little scout optic. I figure a little uh, Trijicon reflex is a little bit better option. But um, this is outfitted with some Kirkpatrick leather on here. I've got a few extra shots here. you got a full magazine tube. And uh, it can put some heavy medicine down on some, on some animals at relatively close range. And I just thought it was cool that he was carrying one of these like exact rifles in the movie. I'm like, I gotta have one now. And then when you're done with your dinosaur hunting, you can go to Kirkpatrick with some dinosaur leather and you can make your slings out of dinosaur leather. I wonder how much that would cost. But I've always loved this rifle and I just thought it was so cool when he was using one in the movie. And I bought this just before that movie came out. I started seeing the previews and I'm like, ooh, perfect timing. Right. So... I think that it's safe to say that the type of gun that you would need to hunt dinosaurs would be very similar to the types of firearms you would need to stop big, mm -hmm. dangerous game here 
on our planet currently, right? So yeah. when someone goes into the bush, what do they use? Big bore, mm. moving heavy pills relatively fast, okay? So 4570 is no slouch, right? But how do we take that 4570 and put it into a platform that has fast follow-up shots, mm -hmm. but also offers some good penetration and big bore power? Well, then you would step up to a 458 SOCOM, which gives you relative bullet weight to bullet weight power to a 4570, mm -hmm. but in semi-auto platform. So here, we've got the CMMG Anvil, which is a big bore magazine fed semi-automatic AR platform. So it gives you fast follow-up shots. I don't know, maybe a pack of Velociraptors is coming after you. Now look, against a Velociraptor, this cartridge would be absolutely devastating. I think so. A hundred percent. Velociraptors are agile, they're fast, they're deadly, they're predators, right? The only caveat to that is you gotta make sure you practice trying to hit moving targets. Right. But the, uh, the cool thing about the anvil is right. that it's built on kind of a mid-sized platform. It's not an AR-15, it's not an AR-10, but it has Purpose a much built. larger bolt face, bolt, bolt carrier mm -hmm. to handle higher pressures. They have specific 458 SOCOM ammunition tailored for this rifle because it can handle those extra pressures. So you're able to push your 250 to like 350 grain pills a heck of a lot faster than you could on a, on a standard AR-sized uh, receiver set. Which and these really Lehigh cool. Extreme Defense pills are definitely the ticket for dinosaurs because you get the penetration of a solid, but with the wounding characteristics of expanding ammunition. <laughs> Remember, many dinosaurs. Now, granted, I've never seen a live dinosaur, but looking at the skeletons, some of them have some pretty ridiculous skeletal structure. Mm. Shot placement is extremely important. You have to be fast, agile, you've got to be accurate, or that dinosaur is gonna have you for lunch. So, <laughs> 458 offers you at least a chance at a fast follow-up shot if you miss or if you don't get the perfect shot on this dinosaur that's trying to kill you. So, you know, big bore is the ticket here, right? You need something that can penetrate. You need something that can create a large wound cavity and humanely, well, I don't guess there's really any humanely. And, and if they're trying to kill you, I don't guess it matters. But, you know, if you're a dinosaur hunter, you've got to be a conscious dinosaur mm -hmm. hunter. You don't want to wound a dinosaur. You want to put him down quick and humanely. And the way to do that is to create a large wound cavity that will bleed the animal out really fast and put them down. Mm -hmm. All right, so, all right, maybe this is your mainstay, a, a, a lever gun or maybe this uh, 458 SOCOM. Maybe a good 12 gauge shotgun is a nice backup option, right? Lots of Alaskan guides carry 12 gauge pistol grip shotguns um, as a nice deterrent for bears and other large animals, mm -hmm. uh, pred predators. And uh, you know, instead of a pistol grip shotgun, why not a bullpup, all right? This kel KS7 is a nice, light, handy uh, shotgun that could really be utilized as a backup because it's light enough to just carry on the side of your pack. Uh, maybe your main gun goes down and you need a backup. You know, load this thing with some good slugs. A good high velocity slug, which I don't have any high velocity. This is a low, low recoil slug. But you can't deny the uh, visceral energy that's going down range from a good quality shotgun slug. Or maybe uh, you got some of those little turd dinosaurs that are trying to ruin your day, all right? You have the little tiny compies trying to get after you. You could, you know, mow those down with rounds of buckshot, <laughs> right? So That's probably good for all them. All right, one thing about the KS7, you notice how short this thing is, all right? But so, the barrel's full length. But it is full length. But, all right, you think about a Spas 12, all right? Like the original Jurassic Park that Muldoon used. Do you think that he would have been able to swing this thing around a little faster than that Spas 12? Maybe survive? And what was the other thing? The, the other trial by fire of the Spice 12 in Jurassic Park that people don't think about was you see this image, they're trying to shoot through the glass, they get on the ladder, they're going up above the roof to try to escape, the camera pans down, and what do you see? A, 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 a jammed, you, a jammed <laughs> Spice 12. Spice 12. <laughs> the, the gun has malfunctioned. Okay. <laughs> so, and look. Spash 12 is a really cool shotgun. It is. <laughs> but it probably wouldn't be my choice if I was trying to survive a dinosaur attack. I'd want something a little more reliable. You know, I've got an FN police shotgun. <sighs> yeah. It cycles so fast, and it's such a smooth shooting shotgun. We've done a video on it. It's great. But also, man, the Benelli M4 or an M3 would be a great, great shotgun to have in a dinosaur encounter. Um, the M3 is cool because it really, if you're thinking along the lines of a Spice 12, 
don't buy a Spaz 12, buy an M3 because it's the perfect convertible. If you need a pump to semi-auto convertible, there is no finer shotgun than the M3. It's 100%. more reliable and it's lighter weight. And it's more better. More better. More better. -er. Okay, Next. so what if your shotgun goes down? Okay, you, you've exhausted your, your 458 SOCOM, your 4570, which gosh, if they're still walking after having those holes in them, you know, what else, all right? You've pumped them full of buckshot, full of slugs. They're still coming. Where are you carrying all this stuff? I don't know, but you, th this is a theoretical thing. All right, so what about like a, a good revolver or pistol as a backup? Now, we were a little bit thinking about this thinking, you don't want a dinosaur handgun range, man. <laughs> you just don't. But let's just say, you know, he's clamped down on your arm and it's like, man, what am I gonna do? You know, a good 44 mag or a 10 millimeter Glock or something would be a nice backup if you did want to have a pistol in tow. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm thinking of Alaskan guides here. A lot of Alaskan guides carry 44 mag. They carry 10 mil. All and right, there's so a reason. This thing, that, you know, you got grizzly bears up in Alaska, right? They're pretty big. They I are. mean, so they carry 44 mag. Uh, they'll carry like 454 Casul, such as that, but... This thing with some of those 305 grain uh, Underwood saws that we've shot before are hammering stuff. They'll put a hole in something. So I, I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel like undefended. I wouldn't want to go like looking for a dinosaur nest. No, but I mean, <laughs> if you need some serious firepower at close range, I mean, there's nothing better than a good solid revolver. And, and look, you know, the first thought went through my head. I, now, <laughs> I apologize if this sounds weird, but when I was in the Smithsonian, I look up at this T-Rex and he's chomping down on a Triceratops. Mm -hmm. Like it's this skeletal thing. It's really cool. And I'm thinking, you know, that skull's not that thick. I was thinking, like, if, if I had a 44 mag right now, <laughs> okay, and I came out of the bushes with the 44 mag drawn, and I look... And this T-Rex is munching on this Triceratops. <laughs> and I'm thinking, all right, could I pull out a revolver and put one right in his brain? Would it stop him? I think it would. The skull's not that thick. 44 mags, pretty pretty tough round. I mean, mm -hmm. especially a good solid, you might have a chance. Might get through there. Now, what if we just want to... Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. We want to cut right to the chase. We want to put some holes in some dinosaurs, right? We're not concerned about fair chase. We're not concerned about anything. We're concerned about that dinosaur is there and he needs to be on the ground, all right? Well, I got you. En enter the 50 cal, right? Now, I know this is weird and people might call me funny for thinking this, but... I was thinking, I was going through that room and I was thinking, all right, if I had my Barrett M107, it was the only gun I had, would I be able to kill every dinosaur in this room? The answer is yes. A hundred percent. Don't get me wrong, they're big animals. And even that, like, that woolly mammoth, I'm thinking, whoa, that's a huge animal. But again, I'm thinking like 50 cal, I could take him. Mm -hmm. Are you talking 12,000 plus foot pounds of energy? It's and, a lot of bullet, man. And with 50 cal, you can get armor piercing, armor piercing incendiary, some Leary various solids. Yep. I mean, you want. Uh, so the sky's the limit with with a 50 in, in in the ammunition department compared to other like big bore calibers. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so I, I made the comment to Eric. I'm like, what about like an ankylosaurus? I mean, those things are already armored. I'm like, yep, Barrett. You know. But I mean, now now then again, look, you know, those are some thick bones that are on those ankylosaurus. Now, I don't remember if I got a shot of an ankylosaurus or if they even have one, but it's the this dinosaur has a very large skeletal structure that's almost uh, tortoise like mm -hmm. and it's super, super thick. The bones are literally And they've this got thick. a giant like ball on their tail. Oh my gosh. They'll turn around so and neat. wham whip you. So man, neat. I don't know. That I would have to say in a prehistoric situation. And back in the dinosaur days, just get the head that out. would be the one dinosaur I don't think I'd want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with with a normal gun. But any of the other predators, I, I would totally take a shot with 50 cal at any of them, and I bet you could take them down. I was thinking like a 203 or like a Claymore might be kind of handy. Maybe, maybe. But that's out of, the, out of the bounds here. So we've got five guns here. Look, the Barrett M107 is a powerhouse rifle. 
And, you know, if you had an up-armored Humvee with like a big cupola on it or whatever, and you had your, your M107 in there, I wouldn't feel unarmed to be riding through the woods or whatever, and, you know, you see a big dangerous dinosaur, boom! I, I think you could take him down, man. I really do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So every Five Guns video has a wild card. All right, so we mentioned in this video, we're talking about these dinosaurs, right? You would have to treat dinosaurs like you treat dangerous game here, like we have now. So there's a lot of big bore rifles we don't have access to, but we do have a 458 Winchester Magnum Ruger M77. Now this is for the most discerning dinosaur hunter right here. That's for the Van Pelt. You gotta be, you gotta have a pair of brass you know what <laughs> i'm telling you so this is only three shots but you have the mighty 458 wind mag and again this is loaded with a 350 grain extreme penetrator from lehigh mm. we're very partial to this bullet for dangerous game and for large game and with a good hot load in this rifle you could certainly persuade even the largest critter I mean, this is round. more powerful than your 4570. Oh yeah, so like, you know, it's like a 4570 just kind of on steroids. And you can run heavier projectiles, it's a belted cartridge. And uh, yeah, it's like 4,000 plus foot pounds of energy. I mean, on the low end, <clears throat> on the low end. So yep. it's pretty insane. But there's stuff even bigger than this. Ray used to have yeah. one that was called a 600 overkill. Yep. And it was overkill, he wound up selling it before we could even shoot the thing, but I mean, there's a plethora of big game cartridges out there that probably could do the job, but these are fun. These are fun you know? and they're relatively available. Now, yeah. uh, the 450 at Win Mag, <clears throat> this is honestly light medicine for big game, mm -hmm. okay? You can get into 458 lot, which holds a good bit more powder than this cartridge, yep. okay? I don't know if it's possible to punch this chamber out to 458 lot. I'd have to check on that. I don't know if the length of the magazine is long enough to hold a loaded round. I'd have to look into it, but. 458 lot mm. is a great cartridge, and there are many big bore cartridges out there, like 505 Gibbs, you know, 500 Nitro Express. I mean, there's lots of these big old, you know, 50 caliber mm. and 45 caliber big bore hunting rifles the, that would totally persuade all the, uh, the Jeffrey rounds and such. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah, crazy amounts of energy. Oh gosh, yeah, tons of energy. So it would not be uncommon. In fact, when you look at the Jurassic Park movies, okay. What did this one hunter, I don't remember his name, but this hunter shows up and what does he break out? His nice, you know, double rifle. And of course it's a big game stopping rifle. And he was looking for a legitimate challenge. You know, this guy was a sportsman, right? He'd gone around mm -hmm. and killed every single animal on planet earth. And the only thing that could make him happy was to go and take a dinosaur. And, and I really do feel like this guy was looking for a challenge he was mm -hmm. looking he wanted to hunt these animals right so you know there is that side of you that wants to be a sportsman but then there's also this side of you that wants to survive and not get eaten by a dinosaur so that would suck yeah that would not be a good way to go you know to think that you're going to be a turd later <laughs> <laughs> so anyway yeah, something like, makes me think of jeff goldblum's line in the first movie yeah exactly Great wow. movies, by the way. But um, <laughs> excellent movies. You know, hopefully this you know points you in the right direction. If you ever find yourself in a horrendous dinosaur encounter, maybe now you'll know what you need to grab before you run into the jungle or run away. Or maybe you're just going to run away. That's fine too. But I think I'd like to have at least a little bit of a fighting chance against a dinosaur if I was in that situation. So um, I think so. There are many guns that could be substituted for these, but these are ones that we happen to have and we thought would be a fun talking point. So. Guys, thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. This was a fun one. We always have fun with five guns. We've been doing these videos a long time. We try to keep them flowing for you guys. So uh, thanks for watching. Many more videos on the way. If you like what we do and you want like to support us, uh, the most direct way you can support us is through Patreon. Donate a few bucks to go towards these videos. Or go over on Ballistic Inc. Pick yourself up a t-shirt yep. like he's wearing or like I'm wearing. This is actually a Military Arms Channel shirt. I think this is 9mm SMG. It is. But all the shirts that you buy supports those content creators. Goes right back to supporting their channel. So support your favorite content creators over on Ballistic Inc. Uh, also, Man Cans is a product we sell. If you'd like to purchase or pre-order a Man Can, all the funds we earn go right back into supporting these videos, supporting our message, and supporting this content. So thank you for believing in what we do. Thank you for watching. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. See you guys.